this week we are doing a autumn reading vlog. I've already done my autumn TBR. I filmed a dark academia tag. I don't do reading vlogs very often, but I do like when they have a theme. This is fun because I think if I film the whole week, then Halloween will be included in this as well. Not that I have any particular plans, but I do really want to make an American style pumpkin pie. But I want to talk you through what I think I'm going to read this week. I just painted my nails because I needed them painted for another thing I'm doing today. And I didn't have enough time to wait for them to completely dry. First up, I'm finishing the last two stories in the beginning of the world in the middle of the night, which I actually had read most of ages ago when it came out. And then I realized there were a few bits I hadn't finished yet. Now seemed like a good time to do so. It is a selection of creepy short stories written by my lovely friend Jen Campbell, who is also a fellow booktuber. So this is not going to take me more than like half an hour to finish off, so I'll start with that. I am currently 35 books behind on my reading challenge, but I have read, I think I've read about 40, which I'm happy with. It's going great. I went for the goal of 100 this year, not knowing what this year would look like. We do what we can do. And then I'm also reading The Foul Twins by Owen Colfer. And this video is also sponsored by HarperCollins for the Foul Twins series. Part one has been out for a little while, is out in paperback now, and part two was just released. And this week, I also get to interview the author Owen Colfer. I'll tell you a bit more about this later, but the Artemis Fowl series, I probably read when I was 10 or 9. It was one of the first books I remember taking out of the library. I've already started in this, but obviously I need to read a bit more and come up with questions for the interview and I'll share some of the interview in this video as well. Then uh, you saw this come up in my autumn TBR video and it is Through the Woods. I have to reread this before every Halloween. It's a graphic novel. I love it. Again, it doesn't take very long to read scary short stories, love it. Then this one is kind of a maybe read on Halloween kind of book. Uh, it is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I've read uh, We've Always Lived in the Castle and I really enjoyed that. This has surprisingly large letters. I don't know, sometimes when you buy a book you're like, huh, interesting. I'm halfway through the TV series. I love scary things. There's also a PR screening happening of Shirley, which is kind of like the story of her life slightly fictionalized with Elizabeth Moss playing Shirley Jackson. That one is an at-home press screening. And I don't know if I have a spot yet. As soon as it happened, I was like, I used to have a copy of this and then I lost it. And so I've rebought it. I'm ready to read some scary stuff. It's currently Sunday. I'm gonna try and film a whole week and maybe even take you outside. Tuesday morning. I had quite a full on day. Oh, I need to show you the board game. Hold on. Where's the board game? I almost finished my reread of Jen's book on Sunday. I have a few stories left, but today is the day that I'm interviewing Owen Colfer. I actually didn't do much reading yesterday evening, and instead we watched the first episodes of The Haunting of Bly Manor, which I'm not 100% sure of, but we'll see. And then also we played this new board game, Seven Wonders Duel, which if you like games like civilization you'll really like this or i think if you're into games like settlers of catan it's mostly cards and tokens but it seems like one of those games that will be totally different every time you play it it's really fun i've never talked much about board games okay so on to the file twins i am currently on page 88 i will ask owen as well to give a quick introduction of what the series is about but if you haven't heard about artemis fall or the file twins basically there's a series of books called the Artemis Fall series where there's the son of this very successful criminal. The boy is really smart and he discovers the world of fairies and magic in an effort to kind of extort the fairies basically. You also discover this whole underground world where the fairies live. It's all very technologically advanced. They basically have like the fairy version of the FBI. And that is a long saga of books, which I read most of as a kid. And then recently in a series I want to finish, 
video I mentioned that I want to, you know, read, I think it's the last three I haven't read yet. And then last year I heard that there was a new series coming out, which is set in the same world, but with a totally new cast of characters and in a new sort of timeline as well. The setup of this series is that there is a set of twins. They are the young twin brothers of Artemis Fowl. They're total opposites. Miles likes to wear a suit, super smart. Becca is a bit more of a, a free character. You immediately meet the baddie who is basically out on a mission to live eternally and you also meet a new character who is half pixie half elf pixel as they call it she is in training to become like a special force officer in uh the fairy world she's on a mission on earth and there's this moment where all these characters the baddie and the fall twins and the fairy and a troll they all collide and that is where the story starts off and that's just where i've stopped reading the stories are set against the same backdrop but because it is a whole new story and especially a whole new set of characters that you get to meet. You don't really need to have any previous knowledge to get started on this series. And I've just turned the page and what I already thought was gonna happen from the cover is they're heading to the Netherlands next. I don't think I'll get around to reading number two in this video, which is called the Fowl Twins Denial Charges. It's really rare that you get to ask like a childhood favorite author questions directly. So I'm just trying to think about like what as a kid I would have liked to have asked him. But then also now as a reader and someone who's worked with authors, I have a few other bits of work to do as well before the interview. I have a few hours left and Jer is gonna help me set up the camera. It feels like a rare opportunity to sit down during the week and read for work, which I'm hoping to build in more time for in the future. All right, I'm filming with two cameras right now. Hi. And hi, <laughs> just because I wasn't sure what would be the best way to get this, you know, all on camera. I'm also recording the Zoom call. Maybe this is overkill. Sana, how are you? I am doing good. It's a bit rainier than I'd like it to be, but other than that, I'm all right. That's not so bad. Yeah, we're. it's nice there too for a change. I was so excited to do this interview because I started reading the Artemis Fall books when I was nine or 10. Oh, I'm yeah. now 31. <laughs> And so it was, it's one of the first books I got out of the library and I read it in Dutch because I'm from the Netherlands. That's great. I remember touring, going to Amsterdam and Rotterdam, I think the first year the books came out. Um, I always have a kind of a fondness uh, for the Netherlands. I think it would be really nice, especially for people watching who um, haven't read the new series yet. Would you mind doing a really sort of quick summary or pitch? The Fowl twins, Miles and Beckett, are Artemis Fowls, who you may have heard of, his younger brothers, and they take up the baton when it comes to fairy-related shenanigans. Uh, and in this particular book, they are enlisted forcibly uh, by seven dwarves um, who are trying to steal a very special cache of uh, irradiated gold from a shadowy CIA type organization and the only way they can get into the secure facility is with the help of Miles and Beckett Fowles and like many Irish men they have a very um, particular set of skills uh, and uh, they're able to help them. Uh, although of course they have their own ulterior motives and uh, in the end um, it all comes to a massive climax on Dublin's Docklands. When I sort of thought about, okay, what would young me would have loved to ask you and then me now as well. I think the things that always just about your books in general really stuck with me are both the worlds and the characters. And I think especially the characters and especially now reading the new book as well, there's always the quirky cast of characters that are, you know, enemies, friends. It's always such an interesting mix. Well, I always have to be very careful um, writing characters that um, they don't just all become me. And that's quite boring. If you, you have 12 characters and they all turn into me, uh, that even for a writer, you have to admit that's probably not the best idea. So I try to pick people um, to base the characters on, not completely. Right but maybe some aspect of their character. And so instead of asking myself, what would I say in that situation? I can say, what would my brother say? And then I know exactly what the character will say. So um, that makes it easy. And as I write more and more books in, that are related to the Fowl family, there are more and more characters. So you wanna be careful not to uh, double up and to repeat yourself. Luckily with the twins, there are similarities. So Miles is very like a younger Artemis, only more so and worse. As regards worlds, uh, I try and take a place that does exist and then maybe 
build on top of that. Uh, it's pretty easy when you're talking about real places that I try and use places that I've been um, as much as humanly possible. And then if it's, uh, it's not a real place, for, for example, uh, Haven City, I try and take a real place and then uh, build uh, on top of that. I think when um, I was writing the first book about Artemis, there wasn't really much about the fairy city in there. It was very basic. Um, there was a chapter at the beginning where Holly was down in Haven and then it, they went above ground. But in subsequent years, I had visited places like Hong Kong and I liked, um, I was in a suburb in Kowloon and across the bridge and I kind of liked how that felt uh, where it was very old, but also really new. Uh, and I, I, I kind of based Haven City on just the, the, the vibe, if you like, uh, of Hong Kong and Kowloon. So um, it helps for me to just nail it down in reality in some way. So if, if anything you take, any if you take Holly and you take off her wings and you take off her helmet, uh, then it's actually a girl I was teaching. How did it feel going back into that world again? Have you ever had like really long breaks from that world or have you always been working yeah. on projects kind of related to it over the years? No, well, when I finished the, the, the Artemis Fowl series um, with The Last Guardian, I'd really had enough then and, and I'd been working in the fairy world, if you like, for 15 years. Uh, so I said, I was got, I was quitting and uh, of course I did a big um, tour for that book and every, mm -hmm. everybody asked me are you ever going to go back into uh, the foul world and I just said no done finished but after a while I could see there wasn't people weren't happy with that really and they were um, a little bit upset so I kind of made up an answer and my answer was yeah in five years um, <laughs> I'm going to go back and do the foul twins and I really didn't intend to do that, but it, it's almost like I had manifested it. Or I had said that to the universe and then... Planted a little seed. Yeah, I planted a seed in my own mm -hmm. head, yeah. uh, which was mad. And then uh, about three years later, I started to think, yeah, oh, maybe, oh, maybe I will go back, but not yet, not yet. And I, every year I said that to myself, not yet. And so for about seven years, I didn't go back. And I did other stuff. I did the Warp series and I did a couple of adult books and uh, a few plays. And But then uh, about two years ago, uh, my agent called and said, listen, the publishers in the UK really want a foul book. Do you, have you got anything you might do? And I said, well, is there, I didn't, I was surprised there was still an appetite for it. And I thought, well, I do have this idea for the twins. And, uh, and once I said it out loud, that was it. I started to work. I started to work on it and I was very surprised how much fun it was to do because coming towards the end of the foul books, it, I found it hard uh, to keep going back into that world. But with these ones, I'm really enjoying it. I, I think part of it is my own age, you know, I'm 55 now, so I'm less precious about things and um, I'm just doing what I love to do. And I realized I still love to do that. So I'm working on the third book now. And uh, after that, I. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm always curious about whether when you when you started there, was there anything you ran into or something that you maybe anticipated that you found difficult or was it just, you know, easily getting back into it again? It was a mixture of both. Um, you do slip back into that world, but you don't want to get really complacent, uh, not uh, make, make them uh, notable in any way. So I, want, I really wanted these books to be a lot more quirky uh, and a lot funnier and a lot more ridiculous. I mean, the, the plot lines are just mad. And uh, and I was thinking things, you know, like Artemis in its own world works because it, it adheres to its own rules. Uh, but I just wanted these two kids, they're just like firebrands and anything can happen. You know, at one point, Miles knocks down a historic building with a well one well-placed tap because of his theories of an architecture. So I love that kind of weird yeah. science and faux science and just, you just don't know and it's unexpected, but it's still just about hangs together in its own world. And also these books don't have that adolescent tension that the Artemis Fowl books have where yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people would be saying, well, are Holly and Artemis gonna to get together? Or, will, or, you know, and at one point, um, Artemis had kind of a, you know, not a romance, but a crush. Uh, 
on a character, but this is not like that at all. Like the boys are 12, they don't care. And they're very arch, like the villains are, it's very whoa. Are there any authors in particular or books in particular, whether it was when you were starting off writing or now that you really admire or got inspiration from? Um, I, when I was starting, I really loved, uh, you know, I was a mad reader. Uh, I still am, probably not as much as I used to be, but, uh, and probably not as much as you, you seem to be reading quite a lot of books. <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I loved um, the classic adventure stories, things like The Three Musketeers, <clears throat> The Count of Monte Cristo, Treasure Island would have been a big favorite of mine. Uh, and I just liked, I, I think subconsciously, I was trying to learn how you construct an adventure story uh, that just keeps moving at that pace, and uh, but yeah. it's still complex and has interesting characters. Uh, so I loved all that stuff. I loved the old, I loved uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, something mm -hmm. slightly horror and sci-fi. Uh, things like um, Planet of the Apes that people don't even realize was a book, most people, uh, which is a fantastic book. Going forward now, I still really like a, a lot of people. I think it's a great time to be young, a uh, young adult or someone who likes those books because the the choices out there are fantastic. I love uh, Melissa De La Cruz. I really think she's fantastic. She puts together an adventure story uh, like nobody else. And she just keeps doing it. I mean, she's coming out with two books a year, three books a year, and they're all fantastic. Oh, wow. So when, when I was younger, there simply wasn't a choice because yeah. kids' books were not really seen as commercial. And then I think the first person to change that was probably R.L. Stein. Uh, he came along and sold buckets of books and people yeah yeah i love that <laughs> to realize wow uh you know this guy is selling more books than stephen king it's been nice talking to you and definitely uh, keep up the good work because the more people we have talking about books the more kids will read them and the, the more i was gonna say the more smarter they'll get <laughs> um, very have a lovely rest of the day and thanks so much for talking to me you too very nice to talk to you Brilliant. Thank Bye. you. All right. That was it. <gasps> that was really fun. Good morning. It is Wednesday. After I did the interview yesterday, I had a little bit more work to do. I was pretty tired. What else did I do? I went grocery shopping. I made a really delicious lasagna and watched Bake Off. While I was cooking, I also watched the film Into the Tall Grass. Imagine like a cornfield, but it's a field of really high grass and people that drive by it can hear other people yelling out like help me help me and then they go in and they get lost and then it got it got very out of hand but I'll probably end up watching the last 30 minutes at some point I'm not super invested in it but when I go to some of the grocery stores that are a little bit further away I like to listen to audiobooks I don't really listen to them when I'm in shops and things like that because then there's too much to focus on but if I just have you know, a half hour walk or something like that, then that's a good one. So I just started listening to The Confessions of Frenny Langton, um, which I have a physical copy of as well, but this audiobook is free on my library app. If you are in the UK, I don't know how it works in other countries, but do find out if your local library has an app where you can download free audiobooks, free eBooks. And I think especially now, they're happy for people to just sign up online instead of going into the library, because I'm guessing most of them are still closed. This is a Gothic novel, and I think the author said something along the lines of, I wanted to create a book within this genre, but with a black protagonist and one who really gets to tell her own story. And this is the story of a girl who is a maid, who's called Franny, who is on trial because the people that she worked for were murdered and people think that she did it. And then she's writing down the story of her life. So I've listened to about an hour of that now, but anytime I need to go to a shop or I go for a walk, or maybe if I'm doing some cooking, I'll be listening to that too. I just found this video, which is called Lo-Fi for ghosts, ghosts only. Uh, and I've been listening to that while doing work and I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna use it for some reading later as well. Speaking of ghosts, I just received this in the mail, which is the new Lauren James book, which is sent to me by the publisher Walker Books. I didn't realize it had shiny things on the cover. Um, and this is about a girl who's a ghost. It actually came out in September, but there was a bit of a delay with getting it to me, I think with COVID and warehouses and it just, it takes a while. But I've got it now and I am 
very excited to read it. Although my Halloween reading list is obviously full, but I think this will be a great one to read or autumn read anyway. Date. I've just finished the beginning of the world in the middle of the night. I think my favorites were animals Margaret and Mary at the end of the world I really liked Aunt Libby's coffin hotel. I think I really read this at the perfect time though Any point of autumn and winter will suffice as well I really liked the little illustrations that came at the beginning of each chapter as well or like each story because it kind of sets the mood. As usual, I like the macabre, the weird, the creepy. So it was really great and obviously would highly recommend this. Okay, so it is Halloween tomorrow. I have a full schedule of things I want to do, but I think tonight I'm gonna watch a scary movie and I'll probably read something Shirley Jackson, but we'll see when we get there. halfway through the fall twins i stayed in bed and read a bit more this morning they are in amsterdam and they're currently ruining the city i think the most interesting and the character that i wish would have gotten a bit more screen time or book time so far but i'm guessing she'll get a bit more as we go on is like the young elf special force agent whose situation and character i'm just really enjoying and i was trying to find kind of like good comparisons for writing style or vibe and i think what it reminds me of most is hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy and a series of unfortunate events it partly has that all-seeing narration that is at the same time giving commentary on what's going on in a way where they already know what's going to happen in the long term but also in a really funny way i'm leaving in about half an hour to see some friends at distance outside in a park that is also a historical graveyard. And then I'm gonna try and make a pumpkin pie, a sweet pumpkin pie, which I've never really made before. I did manage to find canned pumpkin. I'll try and film some more stuff tonight, but I will check back in with you tomorrow. These are some lovely bookmarks based on tarot cards, I believe, very shiny and some dark academia stickers by a fellow booktuber who is from the Netherlands. Her YouTube channel is called Books with Leo and her username is um, Mind Daisy. So that's what the shop is called as well. The Magician, you might, you know, you might be able to see why this appeals to me. So yeah, very excited to use these for more of my autumn reading as well. All right, time to go outside because it actually looks nice now. It's been raining all morning, but I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Sturdy wheels, which I like, sturdy frame. And most importantly, it's a bicycle that you sit like straight up. I don't really like the like mountain bike leaning over thing. I've got a helmet, which is incredibly flattering. And I've really come to realize that there's a lot more hills, even when you think it's flat in London, it's not. I want to give you a little look at how I get around in London because I basically haven't been on public transport since like March. And now I'm gonna cycle back home. It's really exciting to be in a part of London, even though it's not that far away from where I live, uh, but it's totally different from like my usual daily walks. So it feels very exciting. I've returned home and I'm about to watch the film Shirley. I think after that, I'm going to maybe randomly select some stories from Dark Tales. Let's go have a look at my pumpkin pie. So I made this. Um, as a vegan recipe, which actually turned out was totally fine for a pumpkin pie. I wasn't quite sure when I started doing it. And I was able to find a tinned pumpkin for it, which worked really well and saved me so much time. So I'm just gonna go 
cut piece. I've learned that I definitely should move the crust more off the edge next time that I make it, but I'm not very experienced pie maker, to be honest. So I think I did all right. All right, here we, woo, here we go. Uh, here she is. I'll leave the recipe in the description. I also bought some vegan whipped cream, but it wasn't very good. So I'm just gonna eat it on its own, I think. So I just used um, mixed spice as the like pumpkin spice. I originally bought this to make some Dutch Christmas baking, which I might still do in the end, but it worked really well and I added some extra cinnamon as well. I have my pumpkin pie, I'm gonna make some tea and then start watching the film. I always stop filming on the last day and then when I put all the footage into the timeline, I realized where the gaps were of things that I didn't discuss. I did read Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. It is still as good as I remember. There's definitely one or two stories where I'm not entirely sure what the ending is supposed to be. And I love an open ending, but sometimes the open ending is so open that because of that, it loses some of the scariness. But in general, just the stories, the illustrations, I love it. I will be rereading this every single year. Now I know this is a reading vlog and not a what did you watch vlog, but I can never resist talking about films and TV shows anyway. I finished Bly Manor. I cried a lot and I loved it. I kind of watched the second half of the series all in one go. And I think it's one that would be really interesting on a rewatch once you figure out certain things in the show. Somehow I didn't love, I don't really know how to explain it, the style of how they filmed the bits that weren't Bly Manor at the time that you're like in the story. So the things around it felt a bit cheaper, like a bit more TV, while the rest felt more like film-like quality to me. But yeah, absolutely loved it. Would highly recommend. It's a little bit scary, but not as scary as a lot of other things. Then I finished The Foul Twins. It looks big, but I didn't realize it was like 420 pages. So it took me a little bit longer than I expected. It felt so nostalgic and heartwarming and the friendship, the camaraderie, the tech, the outsmarting villains. It was just really fun. And what I also love is that even though this is the first in a series, it feels both very finished with this particular story, but you know that there's a setup to continue the story. But I like that this is a story totally on its own. So when you finish it, you do feel like that story is done. So that was really fun. And I wanna say a big thank you to HarperCollins for working on this video with me and giving me the opportunity to interview Owen. And then finally, I did get to some Shirley Jackson. I read a few stories from Dark Tales. I don't think I talked about the press screening that I watched at home, which is of Shirley. It was quite arty. It doesn't have like loads of plot in it. It's very dark, both in subject matter and in how it's filmed. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. Even though it took place over quite a bit of time, it felt like you were just kind of watching like a snapshot in someone's life. Anyways, made me even more intrigued to read more Shirley Jackson. And I asked you which of these stories I should read because I didn't have time to read the full thing, which after having read these stories, I definitely will. I read Jack the Ripper, which was quite short and yeah, it was all right, it was good. I have a hard time remembering plot and especially the ending of plots when I have to talk about it later, which comes in handy when you want to rewatch or reread things. I also read The Sorcerer's Apprentice. I just reread the first sentence and I remember it. Yeah, I like that, but I think my favorite one by far was All She Said Was Yes. And reading these stories made it quite clear. I don't know what the rest of the collection is like, but that a lot of this is about the eeriness in everyday life. So it's not all necessarily ghosts, Halloween, that kind of thing. It's just everyday situations with a twist. And all she said was yes, really reminded me of some of the sort of atmosphere in the Queen's Gambit. I don't know if you've been watching like the new Netflix original about a young girl who's amazing at chess and her interactions with the people who adopt her, the kind of, it doesn't seem like real conversations. The very sort of cold matter of fact way of interacting with each other. It's a story about a woman who has to go tell the girl that lives next door that both her parents have passed away, I think in a car crash. It felt very ominous. Shirley passed away in 1965 when she was 48. So a lot of these stories I'm guessing would have come out like 10 years, 20 years before them. Watching Halloween on Halloween and again thinking about what is scary at the time. When you listen to true crime podcasts, you might pick up on some of this where suddenly people would realize like serial killers exist or cults exist. And so it's interesting to see how something that to us seems quite understated at the time would have been perceived as like extremely twisted. I actually would love to read more on that if anyone has any good 
book recommendations, like nonfiction, on sort of the development of horror, potentially. I'm gonna look into that. That is it for the full reading vlog. I think this video is gonna be quite a long one. Um, if you made it to the end, well done. And of course, I'd love to know what you're reading in the moment and whether you're transitioning from Halloween reading to is anyone doing Christmas reading already? Wintery reading? I'm gonna stick with Halloween for a while longer. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Doei!